What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So as a lot of you may know, The Rise of Skywalker is out and the Skywalker saga has officially come to a close and I figured what better time it would be to give you guys my ranking, my tier list of all the Star Wars films. Now do keep in mind, this list is entirely subjective. It is my own opinion. I guarantee it's not going to line up one for one with your list. So down below in the comments, guys, let me know what you think. What is your favorite movie? What is your least favorite movie? Now to make things interesting in the video, I will be giving you guys reasons as to why I put a specific film in a specific tier just to give you guys some thoughts and I guess like insider knowledge into how my mind works. Now I will be including all nine of the trilogy films that includes the original trilogy the sequels and the prequels and i also will be including rogue one and then solo a star wars story even though the two standalones aren't necessarily in the same exact centerpiece of the uh, i guess the films in general i do think they still belong in this video i did like them a lot and now that being said even though i will be ranking movies low and high i do love all of star wars if i'm being honest if there's ever a star wars movie on tv i will watch it sit down no matter how bad i feel about it so keep that in mind i do love all of star wars really no matter what but i will have to rank from worst to best or just sort of just tier ranking the entire time. Let's go ahead and switch to that computer right here. We're using the tier maker website. So we're gonna go ahead and use this. Of course, you guys can see on the bottom, we have all nine films plus the two standalones being Rogue One and Solo. So I think it's easiest if I'm if I'm being honest, I think it's easiest to actually start with the worst movie in my opinion. And this is a no brainer for me. I've This has been the worst movie forever, ever since I have seen it. And I have zero problem putting it at the worst spot in the lowest column. I'm gonna have to go episode two is the worst one. And hear me out here. Listen, episode two is cool. It's got lots of clones, which is super cool. But if you take a look at the movie, um, the dialogue is arguably the worst dialogue in any of the films we've gotten so far. The acting is kind of cringy. The love story between Anakin and Padme just doesn't fit right with me. It feels very not real and i guess if that's the intent of it then that's completely fair but for me it doesn't work the only times in the movie i was generally intrigued was during the camino uh scenes and also during the geonosis uh scenes where they're kind of fighting the rest of the battle droids so i think that movie is the worst like i said i still do like watching it but I think it does deserve that bottom tier spot. I think it's the worst movie out of all 11 we're taking a look at. Now, it also is easier to start with the best one, in my opinion. It's one that I've enjoyed the most for the longest time, and that is Empire Strikes Back. To me, it's a classic. It has great acting, a great story. There's so much excitement going on in the film. Of course, at the end, you do have the spoiler, or not even spoiler, but just the teaser of, you know, Darth Vader being Luke's uh, father, which was really cool. I do like how we see Luke train and evolve as a Jedi and him really trying to embody this new Jedi way that he's sort of used to. Of course, the opening scene on Hoth and the battle there, even though it isn't the most beautiful to look at in terms of CGI and graphics in today's standards, I think it's such an incredible sequence. I do love it. Also, seeing Han Solo and Leia become a thing is really, really cool. The introduction of Bespin, Cloud City, and Lando was super unique, and obviously it's set up for a really cool finale for that trilogy. So, so The Empire Strikes Back for me for the longest time has been number one, and it will remain at number one. I guess we'll also start with the D tier list again, going back to the lowest tier. I gotta put a Phantom Menace in there. Now, as much as I actually do enjoy watching a phantom menace i love seeing liam neeson as qui-gon he's one of my favorite characters i think he's one of the best actors in the entire prequel trilogy and it also is really cool to see young anakin being really innocent and sort of just trying to help out others before he transitions into darth vader but episode one to me is just a little bit of a letdown starting with the duel of the fates it although it is a very beautifully choreographed fight it looks like they're dancing the entire time the music is amazing though don't get me wrong it's probably the only consistent things throughout all these films if i'm being entirely honest i think they just threw away darth maul inappropriately he was a really really cool sith and i would have loved to see more of him but he only spoke one line or two lines in the entire movie and then he did go out pretty ridiculously in the end when obi-wan chops him up in half and Darth Maul just kind of stares at him looking at him as he dumps up above him so episode one is still gonna be in the lower end for me although I do really enjoy watching that movie it's still a D tier video it's now although I do like I said enjoy the movie a lot I do put gotta put it here as a D tier movie now let's actually move to one of the most controversial movies of all time the last Jedi I feel like you either hate it or you love it for me I'm actually in between when it first came out I love the movie I'm not gonna lie I was blinded to a lot of the um, mediocrities in the movie but as I've sort of grown to know The Last Jedi and take a look at how the it fits in the entire story I gotta put it I'm still gonna put it as an A tier movie now hear me out here before all you guys start yelling at me in the comments The Last Jedi from a film standpoint I really appreciate r what Ryan Johnson did in, in terms of 
offering something new. That's something that we weren't really expecting. If you take a look at The Force Awakens, which of course I'll rank that later, The Force Awakens is just a rehash of Episode Four. There's not, absolutely nothing new incorporated in it. However, in The Last Jedi, there are a lot of new things that go on in the movie. Now, of course, there are cringy scenes, i.e. the Rose and Finn kiss, which I absolutely cannot stand. The Leia flying in space, which is a little bit uncalled for, I guess, but I guess the Rise of Skywalker fixes that a little bit. The Canto Bite sequence I wasn't a fan of, but if you take a look at it, it's kind of minor things with the movie. Now, what is great about it, for one, one, we got to know a lot more about Ben Solo as a character, and he is my favorite villain in terms of a story for Star Wars, which is awesome. We also see Rey get to train a little bit uh, with Luke, which I thought was really cool. I actually really liked how Luke's character was used in the movie, sort of playing that Joker card on Kylo at the very end. That was amazing. I honestly don't think of a better way that Luke could have gone out. There was also the Praetorian Guard battle, uh, or I guess the lightsaber duel with Rey and Kylo on the same team, which did not look choreographed. It looked very, very realistic, which is super nice. There was also a beautiful scene where Holdo like light speed the entire ship or the entire fi First Order fleet, which was really cool. The Battle of Crate, which I've built here on the channel, was really cool. And of course, it set up a really unique stance for Star Wars. At the end of The Last Jedi, there was n almost no one left in the Resistance. So I was really interested to see where Ryan Johnson was going with that. However, of course, we got a very different ending in Rise of Skywalker. But The Last Jedi for me, I do really still enjoy the movie. It took a lot of risks. It offered something new and that's something I wasn't necessarily expecting. Let's actually stay in the sequel trilogy. Let's go ahead and put The Force Awakens at... I'm going to put it in a middle tier. And here's why. Nothing beats the feeling of me walking into the theater in, I think it was 2015, seeing a Star Wars movie in the first time I can remember. I don't believe I saw any of the prequel trilogies in the theaters. I just really wasn't like old enough or like... I, I guess I don't remember it, even if I did. Nothing beats the feeling of going into that movie theater during The Force Awakens and seeing it just all start up in the opening crawl, and that is one of the most amazing entertainment experiences of my life. For that reason, I can't put it below B tier, but in all honesty, the movie itself, even though, yes, we do see Han Solo, we, we do see Leia, Chewbacca, a whole bunch of other really cool characters, it's really a movie that didn't take any risks. It's the same exact plot as A New Hope, a big circle of death and obviously you shoot a little little hole in it and then it blows up so the force awakens for me isn't a movie that took risks it's like classic star wars next let's move on to a new hope this is the first star wars movie ever and as much as i will not let nostalgia influence my decision is still one of the best and most classic star wars movies i'm going to give it the top tier rank because it sets up a story that have, was never has never been heard of it sets up characters that have such a bond an incredible bond that we see unfold throughout the entire movie you see han solo's character go from a greedy smuggler who doesn't really have interest over himself to in the end risking his butt to save the day you see luke go from this random farm boy to becoming a jedi now one of my best now one of my favorite characters and performances of all time in star wars is alex guinness as old obi-wan sort of being that mentor to luke um, I was also a really, really big fan of how Obi-Wan, I guess, sacrificed himself, quote-unquote, to save the rest of the gang, even though they got tracked back to Yavin. I also think it was really cool, the whole entire Death Star sequence, having that rebel resistance force going up against this massive working machine of the Empire. So that was really cool. A New Hope was the first movie I ever watched, and I guess Nostalgia might be playing a little bit of it, uh, but I still do love the movie the same as Empire Strikes Back. It set up an amazing storytelling experience, and for me, that's one of the most important things. So let's go ahead and rank the last movie of the OT, Return of the Jedi. Now this for me is going to be a, a, a relatively A tier movie. Now Return of the Jedi was, in my opinion, after taking a look at the prequels and all the Star Wars movies, it has very prequel vibes. Not entirely though, Return of the Jedi is still a really, really good movie. My favorite sequences of all time uh, from this is, has to be the Endor battle sequence. Of course, you have that mix like ground and space battle. You have the space battle with your Death Star and how uh, all the Rebel fleet gets essentially trapped into a trap as Admiral Ackbar so graciously puts it. And then you also have the land battle with Han Solo and Leia leading that like insurgency force onto Endor. I think it's a really nice battle. I was really impressed and I still am impressed uh, with the ending duel. Of course, the final duel on Death Star two between Emperor Palpatine, Darth Vader, and Luke. I think that was a really good sequence of great acting as well. You can see the conflict in Luke Skywalker wanting to save his friends and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then of course you see the really cool lightsaber battle. Next, let's actually get the two standalone films out of the way. For here, Rogue One, I gotta give it an A tier. It's on the same level as Last Jedi and Return of the Jedi. I don't think it's quite one of my favorites of all time. I think a lot of it 
I think a lot of my enjoyment from the film actually stems from it just being visually appealing. Scarif is beautiful. The Battle of Scarif, both on land and in the space, is incredibly entertaining to watch. Now, but what's unfortunate about Rogue One is I barely felt any connection to the characters, which I guess is kind of a big thing. And I still think my tier is my tier list or ranking of Rogue One is great. Spoiler alert: uh, If you haven't seen it. Everyone dies in the end. That was something I was not expecting. It was one of the first Star Wars films to give us a different side of Star Wars. It gave us a side where the Rebels were, you know, not necessarily not necessarily the good guys. It wasn't like the Empire is always bad, the Rebels are always good. In the beginning of the movie, Cassian completely murders a guy in cold blood for information. And you also see extremists of the Rebels and the Rebellion, of course, Saul Carrera being the problem that he was. Also, Director Krennic is one of my favorite characters of all time. He's an incredible, incredible performance. Um, by Ben Mendelsohn. I loved his character from the second I saw him. But the reason why Rogue One is so high up for me was because it gave us a very different view of Star Wars. It wasn't as black and white as The Empire's Good. Rebels are bad in the movie. You see rebels do a lot of questionable things, make a lot of questionable um, decisions, and you also you and you also see make them the ultimate sacrifice because in A New Hope, you just know that there are Death Star plans and they know, I guess, like where the Death Star's weaknesses are, but here you see that actually happen. And for me, that's one of the most important things. So that's why Rogue One is so up. And now we have Solo, which is, I'd say also a very controversial movie. I'm gonna put it right in the B, in the B column. I think it's a very mediocre movie. I think there's nothing too great, nothing too bad about it. I will agree that it was a movie that we really didn't need, but nonetheless, I was still happy we got it. I will say um, Childish Gambino or Donald Glover's performance as Lando and Alden Einerick, I think his name was. I'm pretty sure I pronounced that wrong. Um, his acting for Solo or Han Solo was incredible. I instantly thought of Harrison Ford when I saw him doing his manner mannerisms and stuff like that. On the film, of course, we got Chewbacca. We have Amelia Clark as Kira. I think the acting and the actors and their characters are really cool um, in Solo. I will say, however, the cringiest part of the movie was when Han gave himself the name Solo. I, I did That didn't sit well with me. That's really my only big complaint. I thought L3 was a really funny character. Um, we finally got to see the Kessel Run sequence, which is super nice. And of course the and of course at the end with Darth Maul and the whole Crimson Dawn thing, which I think meshed together really well. In fact, if you think about it, it made sense that Darth Maul was kind of calling the shots in that organization. So I do actually hope we get to see a continuation of that storyline. I think that was really cool how Kira um, did, I guess, sort of sacrifice her own life. And like the concept of how Kira had to stay in that organization, it begs the question of, did Han ever have any extra run-ins with Kira ever down the road, which I'm sure happened. I'd love to get more content from that. But overall, I really enjoyed Solo. It was a different, unique twist on Star Wars. It was very different styles, and I did like the movie. Up next year, we have one of the fans' all-time favorites, Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Now, as much as I love the story and I love the concept of this movie, I'm going to have to give it the second-to-last tier. I think it suffers from a lot of the problems that the other prequel movies have that has to be the dialogue and the script and the acting which now, I still love watching this movie the intro to this movie with the battle over Coruscant is one of the best intros in all of Star Wars and I love watching it. We got great action sequences. I think the Yudapau action sequence was cool. I wish we saw more of Kashyyyk. Kashyyyk was definitely just like one minor thing which in, wh in where I hope they did like a Rogue One Scarf thing with Kashyyyk in episode three. I think it did that whole entire planet a huge disservice. But when it comes down to it, what really, really turned me off to this movie is the acting. I think Hayden Christensen and Natalie Portman, in my opinion, and then that's not to say they're bad actors by any means. They're both very, very good at what they do. But just, I didn't feel anything between these characters. I also thought it was an absolute travesty that Obi-Wan and Anakin were supposed to be these best friends that, you know, I love you. Remember when Obi-Wan says at the end when he's, he can't muster himself to kill Anakin because he says, I loved you, you were like a brother to me. We didn't see that at all in the prequels and that was just meaningless and in a way that gave the entire end sequence there between Obi-Wan and Anakin ultimately no meaning. Not to say I didn't really care about Anakin or Obi-Wan or their relationship, but it was blown out of proportion and I didn't feel like neither one of them had a strong connection with each other because the entire prequels, Anakin is complaining about Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan's tolerating Anakin and there's no reason for him to be, I loved you like a brother, it just doesn't make sense. Now, some good things about the film. I do really, really, again, like I said before, like the After Effects in the beginning scene, the battle over Coruscant. I am also a huge fan of the Vader transformation sequence. I think seeing Anakin go from a charred piece of, like, marshmallow 
going essentially being turned into the robot menace that he is that was a really cool scene i like seeing the death star at the end with the younger version of tarkin the emperor and darth vader like i said it's a really fun movie to watch it's just got a lot of problems and i don't think episode three was created to the maximum capacity i would have loved for there to be a better script a better dialogue a little bit more of character setup and relationship between obi-wan and anakin and those are kind of my big problems with the movie the last one which i honestly still don't even know where i'm gonna rank this one is the rise of skywalker now i've only seen it once as of the filming of this video i'm seeing it tomorrow i guess actually by the time this video goes up i'm seeing it tonight one more time now i gotta say as much as the rise of skywalker makes me feel weird inside I love the crap out of watching this in the films and in the theater, so I'm gonna have to give it. Oh man, I'm gonna. I enjoyed it more than The Force Awakens. I'd even say I enjoyed it more than The Last Jedi. So I'm gonna put it at the very top of the second tier. I know a lot of people probably don't like that. In fact, I think a lot of people, I think the majority of the fans, like, kind of have the same feeling I have, where it felt rushed in the beginning. It felt like I was watching two movies in one in the first half it was like bang 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 you have kylo on the forest planet getting the whatever and then all that kind of stuff um it's very fast paced but now spoilers ahead for this part of the video if you guys haven't seen the movie click off unless you don't care about spoilers um but for one i loved how leia's uh passing was handled i think her giving her energy giving her life force to bring ben back to the good side was was a really cool way of playing her off like that now in all honesty in my opinion the ideal ending for me was ray dies and ben was alive but however that didn't happen in the end that doesn't mean i completely agree or disagree with it i think that they did the best that they could they have a impossible job at making a movie that someone's gonna be pissed off no matter what decision you make so i give them a lot of credit for the effort that they put into the movie i love the back and forth between poe dameron and azori bliss that was really funny especially at the end that was just a great comedic relief timing right there i was not a fan of palpatine being back but after seeing the movie i did really still thoroughly enjoy it i like the idea and honestly the more i thought about it the more it made sense i love the whole sith vibe on exegol being like this culty following where there's all the sith followers and then rey and kylo fighting against the emperor but overall i mean like 90 percent of the characters arcs closed in the way i wanted it to there was of course the minor thing of rey and kylo ren kissing in the end which i wasn't expecting i wasn't on board with but it's such a minor thing ben dies anyway unfortunately he turns into he just goes away, away and disappears so i didn't really care about it too much and in my opinion it is a really good way of closing out the entire story and yeah that's my tier ranks i hope you all enjoy this video is probably gonna be a little bit on the longer side so thank you guys for joining and tuning in for the entire video so just to go down the list of worst to best the worst movie in my opinion i forgot to move that the worst movie in my opinion is episode two then episode one then episode three um then solo force awakens rogue one return of the jedi the last jedi rise of skywalker and then my top two favorites are A New Hope and An Empire Strikes Back. So let me know what you guys think about this tier list down below in the comments. Let me know what your favorite is. Let me know what your worst is. Let me know what you guys think of my list. Make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, subscribe if you guys are brand new to the channel. I'll be doing a lot more videos coming very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see y'all later. Take it easy. Peace.